This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you today to the worship and fellowship of Delisle Community Chapel. This being the third Sunday in Advent, the period of preparation for the celebration of Christmas. The theme for today is joy. Joy. Joy, happiness, rejoicing. That's what it is all about. So that's what we want to do together as we've gathered this morning. I want to read a psalm with you, and uh, it has to do with joy. Psalm 98 goes like this. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. <clears throat> with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. We pray. Our Father God, we want to join with the psalmist this morning in saying thank you for your salvation. Thank you for all the great things that you have done for us. Thank you for your great love, for your faithfulness to us. And so we shout for joy to you. We sing and make music and let you know that we appreciate and honor and worship you. Help us to focus on you in this hour and to have a real experience with God. May the youngest children and the oldest adults all have a real meeting with Jesus today. Thank you that we can not only hear your word, but share together in Holy Communion. Meet with you in that very special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of singing, you can stand up, you can sit down. What we do ask is that you participate and sing from your heart and praise to God. And the kids are going to be waving some flags here as a part of the worship as we sing our songs together. Well, good morning. It's so good to be with you today as we enter into this Christmas season together. You know, this is our favorite time of the year. And, you know, even though the world is still in a chaotic place, um, I'm just so thankful that we get to focus on such a great message of hope together. So let's turn our eyes to Jesus today and let's worship. Sing joy to the world. The Lord is come. Yeah. 
together. Sing joy. prayer this Christmas season that his joy, unspeakable joy, would rise within our souls. Praise God. Let's continue to worship together as we sing, Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh 
praise his name forever. Thank you, Father. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. Christ the Lord. Come on, sing, we'll give him all the glory. Yes, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Yeah, we'll praise your name forever. Thank you, Lord. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior.
The more mundane, the more overwhelming, the more holy. If Christmas tells us anything, it's that the veil between the ordinary and the divine is thin. And it's often separated by pain. Christmas has been chaotic since day one. Marketing agencies didn't invent holiday stress. Caesar Augustus did. A stressed out father, a nervous mother, an overbooked inn. Christmas not turning out like it was planned is the oldest Christmas tradition there is. Yet on that first Christmas, and on this one, the world becomes a better place when a mother does the things that go unnoticed to all but him. And serenity is on the top of everyone's wish list. Christmas is proof that God wants to be closer to you. He's close enough to hear your songs, close enough to see your tears. For the good work he started, he's promised to bring to completion. And Christmas Day makes today worth it. Because of this, I can rejoice. I take heart knowing that if God himself could break into an ordinary world, he can step into mine. Hard times keep coming. That never changes. But hard times change me. So we dance on tile kitchen floors. We leave the shopping for another day. We laugh until the wrinkles bend upward. And we remember that babies don't keep, except one baby who keeps reminding us what it's all about. Because Jesus came, I have joy. We're going to read from Zephaniah chapter 3 and starting at verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The, the sorrows for the appointed feasts I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. Now, from the New Testament, I would like to read a passage, a brief passage from Philippians, the fourth chapter, and verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Well, I uh, grew up on the Saskatchewan Prairie about a thousand miles from the nearest ocean, I think. I never saw the ocean until I was 16 years old when our family went to the West Coast for the first time. 
The closest that I ever lived to the ocean was during the time that we spent in Southern California. We were just about an hour's drive from the Pacific Ocean at that time, depending on traffic, of course. But I have traveled, and I have seen the oceans of the world from many different shores. Something I have observed is this. It doesn't matter which ocean or from which coastline you see it, the waves are forever rushing to the shore. They just keep coming and coming and coming. Day and night, summer and winter, the steady crash of the waves can be almost hypnotic. Now the size of the waves will vary. Sometimes they're very gentle, small, barely noticeable. Other times they are huge, overwhelming, even destructive. But they never stop coming. The ocean, it seems, is never completely still. Life feels a lot like the ocean. The troubles and tribulations of life are like ocean waves. One wave of trouble is barely passed before another one comes to knock us off our feet. They just keep coming and coming and coming. When we look around, we see that we are surrounded by suffering people. Everybody has problems. When we turn on the media, we are bombarded by horrific news. The media continually feeds our fears. They seldom report the good news. There is good news, of course. But somehow people are not as attracted. And so they generally like to give us the bad news. There is a saying in the news business. If it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> now, in the face of so much pain and negativity in our world, one might be tempted to wonder, is it possible to experience real joy and happiness? Our families all struggle with the same things. Illness, finances, temptations, and sin. And yet, the answer to the question, is it possible to experience real joy and happiness, is Yes, absolutely, yes. You don't have to live in your doghouse. Because Jesus came, we can have joy. On the night that he was born, the angel said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Because Jesus came, you can live with joy. Jesus was born so that you can live with joy. Jesus is the most joyful person, the most joyful person that ever lived on this earth. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus was full of joy through the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus enjoyed life so much that he was accused of being a glutton and a drunkard. This wasn't true, of course, but the skeptics couldn't believe, I guess, that anyone could be that happy if he was sober. Just saying. Please do not misunderstand me. Jesus never minimized the pain and the brokenness in our world. In fact, Jesus was facing his death by crucifixion. The most horrible, awful way of executing a person that the Romans could devise. And just shortly before his crucifixion, Jesus said this to his followers. He said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The Bible says, 
Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus died for you. He died for you. And he came back to life again. And he lives forevermore. Real joy comes from knowing Jesus. From knowing him as your Savior and your Lord. Knowing that you are forgiven and that eternal life is yours. Joy is not the result of circumstances, but of a relationship. A relationship with Jesus that is real and personal. Christians ought to be the most joyful, happy people in all the world. Because Jesus loves you and cares for you and has a plan and a purpose for your life. He lives within you by his spirit. He leads you and guides you, and fills your life with joy. There's a verse in the Bible that says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is the gladness of heart that comes from knowing God, abiding in Christ, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. So what do we have to be happy about? Jesus said, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Isn't that great? If you're a, a Jesus follower, if you have confessed your sin to him, if you have invited him to be Savior and Lord of your life, your name is written in heaven. And Jesus said, that's something worth celebrating. Rejoice in the Lord always, Scripture says. I will say it again, rejoice. In fact, I'll say it again. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Another Scripture says, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. These are right out of the Bible, folks. God's word, his inspired word to us. Listen to this one. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It's talking there about the gift of Jesus, God's great love gift. Jesus is God's love gift. And when you love Jesus in return, you have joy, real joy. Peter wrote a letter in which he said, Though you have not seen Jesus, you love him. We haven't seen him with our physical eyes. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. The message that I had for you this morning is just a very simple one. Jesus came. And because Jesus came, we have joy. I deliberately kept my message shorter this morning because... I wanted to give attention to additional important things that are happening here. The message of the video, the readings and the lighting of the candles, and most of all, to the celebration of Holy Communion. We may not always think of communion as a time of joy, but it is. It really is. You know, Jesus even anticipated joy as he faced his death. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. If Jesus could go through that and maintain an atmosphere and attitude of joy, then the things that we have to deal with are pretty small by comparison. And we don't have to handle them alone. He is with us now 
and always. So as we come to the table of communion, let's come with grateful hearts. The first communion service was held at the Passover supper that Jesus shared with his followers, his closest friends. And during that supper, he instructed them to do this in remembrance of me. They did it and kept on doing it, and we do it too. Followers of Jesus all around the world observe communion as a way of remembering Jesus. We're going to do it with joy because Jesus came. Live. Our Father, Abba, thank you that we can come to you in prayer and know that you are with us. Thank you that your spirit helps us to pray. And even as I lead in this prayer, Father, help all of us to pray along silently and to open up our hearts to you. You know everything about us. You know us so much better even than we know ourselves. You know all the things we have done, all of the hopes that we have, and you love us, love us, love us. And when your love flows into our lives, we have joy, real joy. Make us happy people, contagious Christians. May we attract people to want to know the God that we serve, the God that we love. Today, God, we uh, lift up to you a number of requests. Uh, we want to pray for the community of uh, Mayfield, Kentucky. There are so many uh, injured people and grieving people there today. Uh, so many lives and so many families have been devastated. We pray for those people. May they find comfort as they turn to you. May they find healing in time. Lord, draw people to yourself through this disaster. Don't let it be wasted. I ask God that you would be with those who have responded and would continue to respond. May the people who know you, the churches of the area, reach out in love to those who are hurting. Today, God, we also want to pray for the nation of Cuba and especially for the churches there. We thank you that you have placed pastors in those churches who are serving you by serving your people. And we ask God that as uh, we've been able to do something to bless them, that you would make them encouraged to know that there are believers in Canada that care for them. Lord, we thank you for those who have been generous in giving to the angel tree here in our own community. And we ask that the families that receive the gifts would be blessed and that they would realize that ultimately every good thing comes from you. Father, as we come to this service close, we pray that you would be with us. Make us aware of your presence right now, right here, where we are this minute. And may that sense of your presence go with us throughout this day, through this coming week. And all through the Christmas season and into the new year. And may an awareness of the presence of Jesus make our lives different from this day forward. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God's hope, love, joy, and peace be with you. May the presence of Jesus. Make you strong for the joy of the Lord.